when I started processing this, getting ready to process it and put it in the jars, I decided that I have family members who some like it sweet, some like no heat, some like a little heat, some like a whole lot of heat. So I split it up into threes. Here in the front, we have sweet uh, cha-cha relish. And then over here to the left, we've got hot, like really, really hot. And to my right, we have medium spices. Um, just want you to look at these. They really, really, really look good. Um, I like my cha-cha chopped fine. Some people like big chunks, but it just turns out so beautiful in the jar. And I just love it. I just love it. And I thank you for following along on this journey. Welcome to Sage's Kitchen, where you're going to learn how to love cooking and fall in love with your kitchen. Today we're doing something very, very special and dear to my heart. We are down to just one jar. Cha-cha, do you know what cha-cha is? It's a pickled relish and it's been in my family for a long, long time and I know in many of your families out there. But I really love this relish. I eat it with pinto beans and greens and collard greens and peas and whatever else you want to, you know, um, add a little touch to your food and a little bit of seasoning and spice. But I have been making cha-cha since I was 16 years old. My Aunt Callie taught me how to make cha-cha and I would go to her house and we would chop all day long and we were canning all day and all night to get this done and I'd spend the night uh, at her home and it was just so rewarding you know just talking to her and learning how to can and that's where I learned how to do it from my Aunt Callie and my mom so I'm down to a few jars but I want to tell you I have been shopping for the last four hours um, mainly using my food processor for some of the ingredients but some of the ingredients in cha cha you just want to chop them up real fine one of those ingredients would be tomatoes you don't want to put these in the food processor so I have here what I've been working on uh, for the last four hours I did all of the cabbage and the carrots and the onions and bell peppers uh, in the food processor, but I did all of uh, the green tomatoes by hand and so I'm going to keep chopping and chopping uh, I'm going to get these done and then I went out to the garden and I picked uh, some peppers And so we're going to chop these up, but I don't want to do this now I'll chop the peppers up right before we get ready to can them um, so uh, our next step will be to put some canning salt uh, on our relish here and leave it overnight. I'm not going to put very much on. We'll leave it overnight and then before we get ready to can it, we'll rinse this salt off. Basically what it, the canning salt is going to do is to pull all the moisture out of the vegetables and it's going to make them crunchy but we don't want to can with all that salt, so I kind of rinse them off a little bit before we start canning. Um, I have two pans here, and I just had fun today doing this, and I want to make sure that uh, you know how, I usually take these um, green tomatoes, both green tomatoes for these two pans, they were pretty big. I save these little ones to the very end, and I'll just chop them up and um, show you how I do this. Many of you have asked me to do a video on making cha-cha. I've got your texts and your box, your inbox messages. So this is what we're doing. We're chopping and um, the green tomatoes are chopped just a little bit larger than all the uh, other ingredients. I think the onions might be the smallest thing chopped and then the bell pepper went up a little size bigger and the cabbage is pretty much shredded like you would slaw. But um, again, 
I, I cut that a little bit more so it wouldn't be like too long and stringy in the jar. Um, the carrots, uh, I bought the shredded, four packages of shredded carrots and just chopped them up in the food processor just, you know, a couple of times, not real hard, but enough just so they wouldn't be real long and they'd look chopped up. So you don't have to shred carrots and cut them up and then do those. But this really smells good. Now, what we will do in our next step is, like I said, uh, put the salt on the relish, leave it in the refrigerator overnight. We'll drain it off tomorrow and then I'll come back and show you how to make the brine to go with this. It's really going to make it taste good. That's what we have. So, meantime, would you hit that like button and subscribe to Sadie's Kitchen? I need you to follow me because you are a member of Sadie's Kitchen. So, so here we go. We are going to make cha-cha. Many of you out there might make your own cha-cha. But if you do, um, put in the description below what you put in yours. Your ingredients don't have to be exactly what I'm doing. You may have your own special ingredients uh, that you put in your cha-cha. But let us know so we can see it. And we might be trying something a little different. I know some people put cucumbers in theirs. But... I don't have the canning cucumbers to do that with. So we're just going with these few vegetables that we could get our hands on. Cha-cha is usually not made until the end of the summer when um, most of the ingredients of vegetables in the garden are down to the last few. And that's what's happened here. I've been in somebody else's garden um, vegan or green tomatoes, everything else I could find in the store. So, got this. So now we're getting ready to chop this up and make our brine. See you later. I am back and it is day two of making cha cha. Welcome to Sadie's Kitchen, where you're going to learn how to fall in love with your kitchen, cooking, and today, canning. I receive your texts and your emails, and in the Sadie's Kitchen uh, Facebook group, we want a video making cha-cha. So that's what we have been doing. For those of you who don't know what cha-cha is again, it is a pickled relish, and um you can eat it with a whole lot of things that, that I previously talked about. But this dish pan, as you, when we started out, we had two huge pans. And then what we did was I, I put some salt on all of the vegetables and left them in the refrigerator so that we could drain all of the uh, water out of the vegetables. And that's going to help make it crunchy. You'll hear me say crunchy quite a lot because there, there's something else that we're going to do to make our cha-cha crunchy too right at the end. But here's what, um, I've already made one batch. I wanted to make a batch before I got back with you just so I can make sure that I do this right because I know that some of you will be trying to make your own batch. And as you can see, they're down here at the front. The only thing that I noticed about these that I just took out of the canner is that um, it doesn't look full at the bottom down there. And But when it cools off, it'll drop down. But I am going to add um, a few more vegetables in the batch that I made for you. Now, other than days, hours of chopping these vegetables, um, there are a few things that you're going to need. So I'm going to start right over here. You're going to need a water bath canner or a large pot that you can water bath in. And I'm going to turn this down just so you can hear me. 
This is a Ball Fresh Tech water bath canner. I love it because uh, all you have to do is put the water in it uh, and adjust the heat on it. Put your can jars in there and then just walk away from it. So the other thing that you're going to need other than um, the canner, you're going to need some jars. And I have washed all of my jars and they uh, have been in the dishwasher sitting. And in order to make sure that we put hot ingredients in hot jars and they have to go in the hot canner, everything must be hot because you can't put cold jars uh, in this canner because they might burst. So our jars are in the oven on a cookie sheet and when we get ready to fill them with our hot cha-cha, then uh, I'll bring the jars back over here. You're going to need a funnel. Uh, you're going to also need uh, your little magnetic piece that picks up your seals. You'll need some seals too. Um, You'll need a debubbler. A debubbler you will use to make sure there are no more bubbles in the jar. You'll see me using this in a little bit. And I've got a spoon out here just in case we need it. you need a measuring spoon. I've got those here. And I know I'm keeping up a lot of noise, but I'm in the kitchen and that's where you keep up noise. I've got some vinegar and water here that we'll use to wipe off the rims of our jars to make sure there's nothing there. And that will help our jars to seal. Then you're going to need some rings. Cause we're dealing with a lot of hot stuff today, you're going to need a lifter. This will help lift uh, the jars out of the canner so you won't get burned. Um, you're dealing with some pretty hot water. The other thing that, um, let's see, you're gonna need a dish pan, uh, lots of pans, lots of hot water, lots of towels, I know it sounds like lots of work, and so you just want to call me and say, Hey, Sadie, can I have a jar? You, I might give you a jar. I just might do that. But I do want you to try to make some cha-cha yourself. Uh, and in order for you to do that, you're going to need the recipe. So I will have the recipe uh, in the description uh, below. But just remember one thing follow the recipe. Do not follow me because I cook with my eyes and my taste and my tongue. And so I may be adding and tasting and adding and tasting and taking away. Um, and I am making a huge batch. And not many of you might want to make a batch this large. Uh, I'm going to be giving this away for Christmas gifts uh, and birthday gifts and friends when they come by and um, people who call me and say, I got some pinto beans and turnip greens cooking. I just need a jar of cha-cha. So we are going to rinse. What I did, I filled this um, sifter up. We're gonna put some, uh, because there's still salt on all of these vegetables. We're going to put them in the sifter and rinse them off, put them in another bowl and get them over here at the stove. So come over here with me and I'll show you exactly what we're going to do. When I started off uh, the salt, when I put it on these vegetables, I probably rinsed off about two gallons of, of water. And that's why I only have uh, one dish pan. It was full, but like I said, I did a batch. And then I have this batch right here that we've already rinsed all of the salt off of it. Uh, and then we're going to put it over here in our pot. I wanna show you, first of all, what we have in the pot before we get started. Um, in this pot right here, we have some brine. And this brine uh, I made two days ago. It's one half vinegar and one half, uh, one half white vinegar and one half water. So I made this pot full. I basically just put some of this pickling spice in it and I let it simmer probably for about three or four hours and left it overnight with the spices in it and then I drained them off the next day and so then you have here your brine that's already been seasoned but I didn't put all the seasoning in there if you look in in this 
pot right here. Got a little bit of cha-cha on here. This, If you look in this pot right here, you'll see a lot going on. And I'm making this in like four small batches. I didn't really like making large batches of cha-cha. Um, I've made a whole dish pan full on the stove with all the brine in it. But I would prefer to do small batches because then if you don't fill up all your jars, then your cha-cha uh, will get soft kind of sitting in the hot vinegar. So here's what we did to this vinegar once we took it out of this pot, the brine that had been seasoned. Then we put it in this pot because the seasoning in here will go in the cha-cha and we won't have to drain it out. So if you look in the recipe description box, you will find out how much seasoning I did use for each ingredient. But I'm just going to share with you what's in there. We've got cinnamon. We've got celery seeds. We've got um, mustard uh, powder. And my favorite, we've got mustard seeds, we've got ginger, cloves, and allspice, and we have turmeric in this batch. I didn't put turmeric in the first batch, and uh, I didn't like that it didn't have a little bit of color to it. So I, am, I did add a little bit of turmeric to this batch. So what we're going to do now is kick our fire up a notch. And then we're going to add um, this cha-cha. I kind of split it into four different batches. And each batch made about 10 jars. So I'm going to push this down in there so we won't splash it. And that first batch, guys, is going to be hot. And I mean spicy hot because I added peppers to it. Not for sure if I'm going to add as many peppers to this batch. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Move this out of the way. These are the peppers I picked out in my garden and I chopped them up, put a whole bowl of these in the first batch. I have this bowl left and I haven't decided uh, if I'm going to add any to this, but if I do, it won't be as much. This batch won't be spicy. And I'll have to label it uh, the ones that are really hot as hot cha-cha. So the next thing we're going to do, we've kicked up our fire here. So we're going to mix all of those seasonings that have settled at the bottom into our cha-cha. And we're not going to cook this, but we are going to make absolutely sure that this is hot all the way through. Like I said, we want to put hot ingredients in hot jars to go in the hot water bath. And you can kind of see the spices in there. You can That celery pops out in the mustard seed. And I really love the crunch of the mustard seed when you put it in your mouth. So I, I go overboard with mustard seeds. So we'll just let this cook for a few minutes and get hot. And then we'll take it over to the cooking board. Guys, this is so much fun. I know you're thinking, that lady's crazy. That's a lot of work. And today's... In today's time, people don't want to take the time to king in. Like I said, I've been doing this since I was 16. <laughs> so I made that first batch because I wanted to make sure I gave you all the right directions. Because usually I just make this uh, by eye and with the ingredients I don't measure. But I'm going to make sure that your batch um, will come out really good. So you're going to need a good recipe. So I tried it first just to make sure that happened and once this is heated up we'll go back over to the cooking board okay we're back over here and we have our um, vegetables heated 
I did add a few peppers to it. Not as many as I did with this batch right here. But we're ready to put them in these hot jars. I got these jars uh, just out of the oven. Do want to, uh, let's have a quick lesson right quick. Anytime you're using turmeric, do not use your nice white spatulas if you have a white spatula. Because it won't be white anymore. It'll be a yellow spatula. So, lesson learned. And one other lesson um, when you are using jars, picking out your jars, make sure they are official ball. They have the ball symbol on the, top, on, the on the front of them, or cur or mason jars. This is a mayonnaise jar, and it is not an official canning jar. Um, don't want to put this into the water bath canner or a pressure cooker. So. Mayonnaise jars are good for storage, but not for canning. And I wanted to share one other thing with you while I was looking through my box. Um, I did find this antique canning jar. This is awesome. Uh, this is, it says Knox at the top and there's a K right here in the middle, but it also says Mason at the bottom. Um, I know this was probably my mom's jar. It's a very, very old jar. Uh, I don't want to can in it either. You can use it for storage uh, for whatever it is you want to do, but I would not can in any type of antique jars. Okay, so we are going to get started now. We need our funnel. And we are not going to use this spoon. We are going to use uh, this scoop right here that we have. I'm going to pour some of the leftover from the last batch in this pot. And one of the reasons that we want to do, the, another reason we want to do this in small batches is we want it to stay crunchy, like I said. But if you, um, like I said, if you want to do all of it one time, you can. I would not advise that. But when I pick this up, I'm going to kind of put a little juice in it. And we're going to fill these up. And I have I always keep a spoon here because if you put too much in it, you can always uh, dip some of it out. And that's what we're going to do. You want to leave like a one inch head space. And I'll show you what I mean by one inch head space. That might have been a little bit too much. This is what's called a debubbler. <laughs> and one of the things you do with this, on one end you can measure. So if you wanted to leave a one inch head space, then I can put this right here and it'll have to measure that one inch head space. It's right on the very top of it. You turn it over to the other end and you use it for a debubbler to make sure there are no bubbles left in the jar. And then we'll continue filling up. I just wanted to stop and share that with you. Now I am going to put, like I said, more vegetables and less juice in these jars. Um, I know you're thinking, where is the sugar, Miss Sadie? Um, I didn't tell you that that brine that I made in that pot behind me, um, there's a five pound bag of sugar in there. Now, you may be thinking, that's a lot of sugar. It's not really when you're going to end up with about 30 jars of cha-cha. <laughs> and there will be some brine left, but it is my intent to make some green tomato pickles with some of the green tomatoes that I had left over. So, if you want to stay around for that, I'll do a video on that too. So, so while you're watching me fill these jars, make sure you hit the like button. Um, if you like this video, if it's useful, if it's helpful, if it's not helpful, let me know that too. If you do yours a little bit different, your cha-cha, let me know how you do that too. I'll take some of that out. 
that, at that one inch head space, if you don't have one of these, it usually stops about right there uh, below the, the rim, rim, rim of the jar. So, and the last time I got 10 jars in my water bath canner. So we're gonna see if we can do the same thing here. These jars are hot, so I have tough hands. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I did add some peppers. Not many though. It won't be as hot as these. But I do have some family members who love hot cha-cha. Really hot, like hot, hot. Okay. And I want you to see one other thing we're going to do here is when I say I like crunch, in order to get crunchy cha-cha, uh, you cannot overcook it. You cannot leave it in the water bath canner any longer than what the recipe calls for. And there's one ingredient that I'm going to add to it. And if you are a canner, you're probably going to know what that is. So, it's called Pickle Crisp, and it's made by Balls. Um, back in the day when they made pickles, they used what's called lime to make the pickles. Um, unless, you, unless you just want to... Um, take that off, I'm keeping up a lot of noise here. Unless you want to spend days making pickles using lime, you can use this pickle crisp and it, it will make whatever recipe you have, you have crunchy. I'm eyeballing this and I can kind of see the ones that didn't stop at the rim. This one I can probably put a little bit more in it. Spoon. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. All right. I think that's good. All right. Do not forget to debubble. But before we debubble, this is what's called pickle crisp. It's by ball. You can buy it in a grocery store. You can buy it. Just about anywhere down the aisle where you see canning food. And I'm going to put one a teaspoon. It's like little bubbles. Let me show you some of it. It's like little bubbles. Can you see that? That's what's called pickle crisp. I'm just going to pour some in my hand so you can see it. So we're going to put an eighth of a teaspoon in each jar. And this will ensure that we have some crunchy cha-cha. I hate to open up a jar of cha-cha and it's soft, mushy, mushy cabbage and whatever else. Put a little bit more in there. Put that back in the jar. Now what we're going to do is debubble. Debubble is getting all the air pockets out so that your top will seal. The other thing that will keep your seals from sealing um, your food so that it will be safe to eat and you won't get botulism. I think I can put just a little bit more in here. is to make sure that you always, when you're canning, keep a bowl of vinegar and water by, paper towel, or you can use a um, dish rag, whatever. Wipe the tops, because we want to make sure there's no sugar, no ingredients on top of this, because there's a potential that it will not seal. And I did not debubble that one. So, all right. Now we are ready to 
put our seals on. Water's hot. Now you do not have to do this um, anymore. Um, it's not recommended that you have to put your seals in hot water anymore and boil them. I'm just so used to doing it. <laughs> um, it's hard to break old habits. Hey, this is a neat way to put your rings. I've got a wooden spoon here off in a mason jar. It's a long wooden spoon, and when I'm canning, I just keep my rings up there. You do not want to squeeze these on tight. You're going to go fingertip tight. Fingertip tight. And this gets hot really fast. So I'm going to turn it up. I think I got it up on high. We'll keep putting our rings on. I really love the, the electric water bath. You hear? It's already starting to boil and heat up really fast. So I'll talk a little louder. Hopefully, I'll out talk my water bath can. Okay, fingertip tight and this is next. We're going to take this because this is hot. Always make sure that you turn um, the top to your water bath canner or your pressure cooker away from you. Like, here we go with, with our lifter. And we're going to put these in. I got 10 jars in the last batch, and I think we can get 10 in this batch. This is really cool, guys. I wish you could see off in here. Get the camera off in here. So anytime you are water bath canning, you want to make sure the water is above the jars, uh, about maybe one, one and a half inch, inches, as you can see, uh, we have done that here. So what we'll, we'll do now, put the top back on, and this is going to Stay in the water bath canner for 10 minutes and I don't mean just sit off in the water bath canner I mean that it has to come to a boil you cannot start your timer until it starts boiling so we're going to put the top on it to make sure it heats up and start boiling faster because it will take it forever if we don't have our top on there okay there we go I think we have one more batch we can make. We got a little bit left here. Um, I've gotten pretty good at just about figuring out how much brine I need to make one batch, which is 10 jars. Uh, in my old water bath canner, you could only do seven jars. But we got it going here, and we'll make the next batch, and I'm not going to put any peppers in it at all. Okay, we'll be back when it's ready to come out. Thanks for joining me today in Sadie's Kitchen. And we did a little chopping, chop, chop, chop for a whole day. We did carrots and onions and green tomatoes and peppers. And now we pulled all that together and now we have it all here. Uh, it has been processed and in the jars. Uh, on that second day, the first day we did the chopping, the second day we did the brine and let it set overnight. And then we brought it all together and this is what we have today. Um, good cha-cha. It's called cha-cha relish. And I am so excited about getting these jars. 
I did tweak things a little bit, but the recipe will be in the description box. If you'd like to make some cha-cha, and you can give me um, a message in my inbox if you need a little bit of help. Now, um, when I started processing this, getting ready to process it and put it in the jars, I decided that I have family members who some like it sweet, some like no heat, some like a little heat, some like a whole lot of heat. So I split it up into threes. Here in the front, we have sweet uh, cha-cha relish. And then over here to the left, we've got hot, like really, really hot. And to my right, we have medium spices. Um, just want you to look at these. They really, really, really look good. Um, I like my cha-cha chopped fine. Some people like big chunks, but it just turns out so beautiful in the jar. And I just love it. I just love it. And I thank you for following along on this journey. Many of you have asked me to create um, some content and a video showing how to make cha-cha. We have done that. And you know it's a lot of work. So when you call me and say, can I have a jar of cha-cha? You will know what it takes to get it in this jar. But I've enjoyed it. But if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to Sadie's Kitchen. It doesn't cost you a dime. Just subscribe and follow me as we cook in Sadie's Kitchen and where you are going to learn how to enjoy cooking too and love your kitchen. I'll see you on the next video. Everybody, this is Sadie in Sadie's Kitchen, and I am picking all of the last peppers and pulling the plants up. Look at this is about four inches tall, and all of these. Let's see, all of these peppers right here. All of these came from this one plant right here. And if I tell you, I'm so over peppers and over them. Basically, what we're going to do. Oh, I, see, I can't pull it up. Let's see. Yep. That's it for this little puppy. Still had balloons on it, though. So, I guess peppers are still going to come. Look at that. But it's gonna get cold. I think it's done with. So that's one plant, and I would probably have this five-gallon bucket full by the time I finish. So let's start picking peppers, and we're gonna make a whole bunch of pepper stuff. So 